Hello everybody. Today I decided to share with you something quite different. Um, I've been meaning to for a little while. I have a pile of books. Ugh, there we go. <laughs> um, and in these books I am featured and I am forever grateful. I am touched. I'm delighted. I'm very, very flattered. Um, because over the years I've been in various editorials and, and, and that sort of thing. And those are fantastic too. Well, can never believe when, when I am asked to be in these things. But these books are particularly special to me. The first one I'll show you, um, these were all since I've been in the UK. Um, there are a couple in Zimbabwe which I ha haven't got my hands on. Um, anyway. In the UK, uh, the first really big book that I was uh, featured in, um, I had a phone call from an author uh, called Andrew Haslam. And this wonderful book, <laughs> A Reference Manual of Techniques, it's lettering, anything to do with lettering. And in this book, it's, it's just fantastic. And he must have come to me with his photographer uh, must have been 2007, 8, something like that, I think. I know it's a long time ago. And it was quite a long time later that the book actually was, was published. Uh, I think 2011, let's have a look at this. Published in 2011 by Lawrence King Publishing Limited. Um, Anyway, so, of course, with, with my uh, glass engraving, they wanted, or he wanted to uh, include the sandblasting technique and my hand engraving technique in his book. Bearing in mind, in this book is everything from um, icing to painting to drawing to printing, road signs, you name it. He, he's just covered absolutely leather you know, uh, even Braille, um, you know, anything to do with lettering. It's absolutely incredible, this book. Anyway, um, so on the sandblasting uh, subject, that's the one he did first. And he came and took a load of photographs um, from start to finish. I had to uh, <laughs> demonstrate in front of him and his photographer wasn't quite aware that I was going to be doing that at the time so it was it was quite um, amazing and I'm I'm glad my nails were in relatively good condition <laughs> at the time because there's quite close-up pictures of of me working and um, going through the whole process of sand sandblasting and then the little the finished um, subject there <laughs> There's my face in the corner actually looking into the sandblasting cabinet and I look very, very chubby. Well, I'm sure I wasn't that chubby then. Anyway, and then the hand engraving. Uh, I see my hair was long then, so that's how I know it is a long time ago. My goodness, my hair is long again now, but it hasn't been for many years. And uh, so then I demonstrated uh, hand engraving sitting at my... Um, my desk with a drill and the lighting set up and uh, I was I was hand engraving a little <clears throat> a little whiskey glass with um, the name Terry and interestingly I wouldn't use this process quite the same now um, I kind of I uh, what did I do I created the lettering on the computer, okay, which is fair enough. In fact, I don't often hand engrave lettering now, only when I'm, I'm asked to. Um, and I cr created it on the computer and then put it behind the glass, traced the outline. And that's what I used to do in the old days. And yes, you can still do that. Of course you can. Um, but I prefer to be a little bit more flowing now. Um, if I was to hand engrave this. But what I did as well is I made the lettering quite thick and then I added a little bit of texture inside just to demonstrate that you can do that. 
Um, so it's just a bit of fun. Um, it's as I say, it's a long time ago, and I would, I would, I would offer something different this time if he came and asked me again. Anyway, so that's that one book, um, lettering, a reference manual of techniques. Wonderful book. Um, then I had a fantastic guy called Paul Felix. Oh, what a superb character! And he came along and took photographs. He is a photographer. And um, this is the book of Forgotten Crafts. And what a wonderful book it is. Uh, as you can imagine, all the forgotten crafts. We've got paper makers. Um, the, uh, what, have, what else have we got here? The rope makers. <laughs> glass blowers, of course. Ooh, who's the glass blower here? Uh, Colin and Louise Hawkins of Loco Glass. They're featured in this. And we've got actually basketry, um, beekeeping. Was that beekeeping, did I see? Couldn't have been, was it? Uh, lost it now. Oh! <laughs> the bee skit maker. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. That is to do with bees, would you believe it? They are traditional hives. Wow. See, now this is what happens. I get these books <laughs> and then I don't read them. Ah, I really need to sit down and, and, and go through this. That is absolutely beautiful. He's weaved, weaved these amazing natural looking hives. Um, and this is a guy called David Chubb. Anyway, moving along, we've got uh, rush seat makers. Uh, spinning wheel maker. Oh, a spinning wheel actual maker, not actually spinning. This guy is actually making spinning wheels. I mean, that's that's really unbelievable. Um, his name is James Williamson. And we've got lace makers. Oh, goodness gracious me. Uh, look at this lady. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, and so on and so forth. And then you, uh, oh gosh, yeah, all sorts of, what else have we got here? Walking stick makers. Oh, fabulous so a great great book um and in here somewhere you have got the glass engraver <laughs> and of course that's me and by then i had short hair <laughs> that was the start of many years of of short hair and so yeah the glass engraver a little story about uh, my glass engraving, a little bit about me right in the beginning in Zimbabwe, and then another couple of pages there where um, I'm sitting there with a, c a couple of pieces and demonstrating on a bowl. And interestingly, I still have these two pieces, even though this dates back. I think this is also 2011, actually. Um, but I still have these two pieces available. <laughs> it's funny how, you know, some things you, you engrave and they fly off the shelf and other things um, I sit with for years and years. And I don't, I don't mind that much because I absolutely love the work that I do. I'm not going to produce something I don't enjoy. So it sits there in the cabinet and is admired and not, you know, by me and, and by my customers. So anyway there we go that that is a, a, a an overlay bowl where i've engraved on the inside and the outside and the bowl was actually blown by adam aronson if i can remember correctly i'm pretty sure it is okay um so right so that's the book of forgotten crafts and it's paul felix sean ellis and tom quinn um a lovely lovely book definitely worth getting your hands on um, and then <laughs> this is not a hardback book actually this is a really really heavy thick magazine of the highest quality I've ever come across um, and the strange thing was I was <laughs> going to gym regularly I still go to gym regularly but I was using a different gym in a place called Bungie and there was this chap there who obviously I'd been going for years, he'd been going for years, we got chatting the one day and it turns out that he is the editor of this wonderful magazine called 
the yacht owner the yacht owner and i think there's another version which is a yachting the yacht, yachting matters or something but this is the yacht owner um and <laughs> anyway it's it's uh colin squire is his name and he is quite incredible this book i mean obviously it's all about yachting the most magnificent pictures um and i think that comes out every it's a spring summer so this one's spring summer so you can work that one out um and i know he takes a lot of the photographs himself as well fabulous magazine and he came and took some photographs um and there we go obviously featuring what i really enjoy doing as well is the, the really technical engraving um there's a, a super yacht across three decanters um and the i have done this several times that particular one is in uh new york i think that one um and then it goes on to another page where he uh has a couple of now these pic these are pictures i took these particular ones um they are they're going back quite a long time um and then of course quite a, a quite a story about me and my work on there so wonderful wonderful to have this in my on my shelf as well they are magnificent magazines so thank you to colin um and oh here is an amazing amazing oh so flattered to be in this um dan klein and alan Poole have a well the the dear late uh dan klein and alan Poole now um have this collection of glass um this is their private collection of modern glass and uh, the book is national museums scotland whoops i'm just dropping all my books um and this was not that many years ago actually oh i know when it was it was just i think i'm sure it was yeah the 2012 olympics because cgs the contemporary glass society had asked us to do a us as in the whole glass community to uh put forward uh pieces in a fun exhibition which they they do quite a lot and i usually enter them because they are good fun and you're given a restriction you're given a subject and a restriction of of size for example and anyone with any technique in the glass world can use their techniques to create something and in this case we were asked to create a uh a medal um any kind of looking medal for the olympics and so i had obviously i don't make glass i only engrave it and yes i do get pieces made but in this case i just got a a lovely piece of crystal um this was only i think it was about three inches about three inches um so it's very much blown up here and i combined um sandblasting and hand engraving i designed the image uh, because how do you depict an olympics in in one little um uh middle and i am thinking it's men it's women um and one thing that they all have in common is emotion and caring and love and support from each other from families whatever um teamwork or individual doesn't matter there there's still um that bottom line of caring and and you know even if they're saying congratulations or commiserations and it doesn't matter but there's such emotion in in the olympics and anyway so that i sandblasted uh two-tone sandblasting the outline i did um quite deep and then the half-tone background and that's 
on the back of the crystal and then on the front oh yeah also on the back are hand engraved um, a wreath of leaves that's that's quite deep and then on the upper surface there is the whole lot of little rings um, uh, going all the way around and then 2012 and I've sandblasted those and I have infilled with a gold so um, I was absolutely delighted that they bought this piece and put it in the collection and that is featured in this wonderful book which um, is just so many incredible uh, works of glass art magnificent um, yes very very proud to be in that so thank you very much Alan um, right and then the last one I'm going to show you is uh, amazing this is the latest one this was October last year 2019 um, the Glass Society and their magazine Glass Matters um, and I was absolutely thrilled to be asked to be in this magazine um, and I, I had the, the editor asked me to send some uh, pictures of myself and of course I took quite glammy pictures <laughs> and uh, anyway so then off I went to the AGM which was held in Norwich last year and he said no 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 come on outside and I'm going to take a photograph of you now it had been drizzling I had had to walk from the car I'd shoved my hair up pretty much like I have now and uh, it was after the AGM I think it was or halfway through oh, I can't remember anyway um, I think it was afterwards because it was starting to get dark and I don't know what I looked like but he said come on outside and so he took me outside and I stood by the wall of um, it's the um, the castle not Castle Mall but there's the castle in in Norwich <laughs> and he snapped away took some photos I never got to see them until I saw the magazine and you know what I thought he was right it's quite a natural little photograph um, and I'm standing there by the wall my hair's a little bit messy <laughs> my lippies worn off and um, hey ho that's me for real and anyway so it's it's uh, the whole story of me and my work and life um, the picture of one of my uh, buildings on an optical crystal block and and a bit more about um, my work uh, I sent him a whole lot of my photographs these are of course my are my photographs and he was going to choose um, he made a really good choice I love what he chose this is one of the latest pieces I've got in my display cabinet at the moment uh, called roses are green and it's a beautiful lead crystal bowl uh, well vase really if you like that I had made um, by Steve Bradley um, crystal overlay so it's thick and clear in the middle with the overlays of color which I've cameo engraved through so um, delighted to have that uh, in in this magazine and uh, interesting how he <laughs> also the title <laughs> absolutely brilliant um, of course I would yes I was born in Rhodesia so that is absolutely correct but of course it is now called Zimbabwe and I left when I left in 2001 it had been Zimbabwe since 19 uh, let me think about this 1979 or 1980 or something like that um, so uh, anyway from Rhodesia to the UK why not I was born in Rhodesia in Salisbury a very long time ago I almost forgot it was like last week I think um, <laughs> I got a book in the post and I thought my goodness it must have come to the wrong address I thought, 
no, it's definitely addressed to me. And um, if you can make that out, <laughs> I thought, well, it's not even in, in English. Uh, I'm not even going to try and say it. Uh, I think it's, it's um, German, possibly, yeah. Um, if you can. <laughs> I think it's an education book by the looks of things. Now, I remember several years ago. Um, in fact, not just uh, by one, I had been asked by several um, people over the years, can we use your image for a book? And I thought, yeah, that's fine. As long as you mention my name, that's fine. And so uh, <laughs> this book comes along and it came with a letter. Um, and this is from the uh is it from the printers i'm not sure if it's from the printers whether it's the print whether it's the the editor the printer the school or what i'm not really sure but it's zurich it came from zurich um and we are happy to send you a copy of the first edition um you will find your picture on page 99 and so <laughs> good heavens and there is my little picture um engraving um, a Japanese dragon and that is one of the most popular pictures um, that I have ever uh, had on on the internet um, I know because the statistics tell me it is it is viewed and saved so many times and a lot of people ask to have this dragon on a glass but of course uh, many never come back to me when I tell them how much it's going to be because the the dragon is all the way around the glass and it is all hand engraved and that is a lot of work but uh, I guess people don't really realize that so I've no idea what it what it says on this page um, but uh, certainly at the back you have um, the list uh, a register list so my name is there with my website um, which is fantastic so there you go <laughs> yet another another book and a surprise one at that big thanks to to everyone who asked me to be in their publications um, I am forever forever grateful I hope you enjoyed that and um, if you want any more details on these these books obviously there are several of them available um, still um, so you may want to purchase one and stick it in your your bookcase at home and have a good read of course not like me who quite often leaves them thank you very much for uh, watching and see you soon <laughs>